Welcome to the Strategic Travel Entrepreneur. My name is Rita Perez. Hello. I've been a travel advisor for over 10 years and am navigating this winding road of entrepreneurship with you. I created this podcast because I wanted to share all the things I've learned from leaders both in and out of our industry that I really wish I would have known way back then. But alas, the important thing is I'm aware of them now and I want you to be too. Ready for this week's show? Let's jump in. Um, to make it easier to charge fees, if you put it on your site, um, mm-hmm. like just spell it out there. And then there's a book I worked through um, in the lab with my members called They Ask You Answer. And mm-hmm. one of the things he talks about in there is assignment selling. And I love it. Um, before you do a consult, you give them like homework. Mm-hmm. So maybe a few blog posts to read or a video on your site that you, things that you want to make sure that they know that help qualify them before you ever talk to them. Yeah. And one of the things you could include in that is, and that you should, is the information about your fee, why you charge it, what it is. So that then that makes that conversation so much easier because they're mm-hmm. not surprised by it. Right. And you're just literally just saying, do you want me to send you a contract? Um, you don't have to. I think that's one of the hard things about charging a fee is like bringing it up. If people don't expect it and, um, worrying about the rejection this way, they already know before they talk to you. So, right. And I think that's part of the nurturing aspect that not a lot of people are talking about. And that's why a lot of my social media now on my travel business is starting to focus on like, what exactly do I do? So I've done a couple lives, which transfer into podcast episodes recently, recently, I had a very funny reel go viral, like 20,000 views, but it didn't. And I did a a live about this on the support business that like going viral doesn't really mean anything. Yes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, but it was a voiceover clip where it's talking about it's, it's the one that's like, it's none of my business or kind of like, I'm going to keep that out of my business where I, the, the written caption is when somebody's having a hard time while they're abroad traveling, but they didn't use a professional to book their mm-hmm. travel with. And so kind of in the written caption where I'm like, I am a travel professional, but I'm not your travel professional unless you have hired me yeah. and kind of like what that means. So I'm doing yeah. a lot more building anticipation and what does working with a travel advisor really look like? So if people have been following me on social networks and are ready to pull the trigger on a trip, they now know what the process is like and what to expect. Mm -hmm. That's actually, um, a podcast episode I have on my list of future ones is the importance of like part of our job, actually what maybe our marketing should be is educating people about what we do Mm because they don't know. And we can't, I was thinking about everybody complains about tire kickers and price shoppers and, um, and yes, part of like some of them are really just cheap and they're not going to pay you. Right. And that's fine. But there are probably a lot of them who just don't know any better. Mm -hmm. Like they don't know the value that you provide because as far as they know, travel agents don't even exist anymore. They might've just found out last week that people still use travel agents. So Mm -hmm. it's our job to convey our knowledge and experience and the value that we bring to things. Right. And, um, and be willing to just treat people with respect and, um, don't discount them right away just because they're like, I don't want to pay a fee or, um, because they're, I guess change that if they come to you and want, like they say, I want the cheapest hotel in Hawaii, whatever. Um, if they're talking about price and they just want something cheap, they, that's all they know. That's what they think they're supposed to do. Right. Um, because that's also a message that we, we get here a lot is, um, if you've paid more than the person next to you, then you got ripped off. And the whole goal is to get everything as cheap as you can. Mm -hmm. Um, we need to educate them why that's not true. I heard a story. I wish I could remember who it was. Somebody came to them with a, with a certain budget for something. And, um, she came back to them. and was like, I can't, 
I can't do what you want for this budget. Mm -hmm. This is how much it's going to cost. And they, she expected them to be like, okay, never mind. But they came back and said, oh, you're right. Like, we just didn't know how much it was going to be. And we didn't even know what to expect for the budget, but we really want this type of experience. So yeah, we're willing to pay more for that. Um, so yeah, I think we need to see ourselves. I see a lot of, I think it's getting better with this new generation of travel agents, but like when I, where I came from, Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of whining happening and I still think there's a little bit of it, but like we expect everybody else to, um, do the work for us. And we whine about price shoppers and we whine about whatever it is. We whine about commission levels and non-commissionable fees. There's this technicality. Well, you said it's really 20, but you're saying it's 18 here. Why are we focused on that? (laughs) Yes. Yeah. So we have to take responsibility for that and educate people. You can't wait around for somebody else to do that for you. And same with like commission amounts. That was my big, that manifesto that I wrote. That was the thing. It was like, why are we giving all of our power to suppliers? Yes, they are our partners, but we have literally co-opted our entire businesses, how much money we make, what marketing we do, Mm -hmm. how much time we spend on a booking. Like I've seen a lot of people and rightly so complaining about hold times recently, and it is absolutely unacceptable. And if If a supplier partner that you're using, if you're having to sit on hold for three or four hours or more, don't book them anymore. They clearly don't value you. I just saw, um, I think it's Royal Caribbean that is now doing the callback thing, right? Yep. Yep. Um, so good. Thank you. Thank you for that. But if other people are not doing it, do not book it. It's like, this is the thing I think is like, it's controversial and I don't, I'm not quite sure how to navigate it. But I know that putting up with stuff like that is not the answer. Um, they can drop commissions at any time and they, when they need us, um, when they need us, they'll increase the commission and they'll be so nice. And then as soon as things turn around again, and they think they can do it without us, they're going to cut commissions again and, um, make things harder and start going after direct bookings. And they have a right to do that it's their business and they have a right to run it and make a profit. However Mm -hmm. they see fit, but we also have the same right Right. and responsibility. And it ticks me off. Well, I was going to (laughs) like, I sat back in my chair because I'm like, Oh, you're going to, we're going to get into a Rita's rant because I come from the hospitality industry and what a two to three hour plus whole time means to me with my hospitality industry background is that, oh, and I'm going to be calling a lot of people out, but I'm just going to call it like it is. You are not a good employer and nobody mm-hmm. wants to work for you. You can't keep people. Yeah. And yes. I, I hate the whole argument that nobody wants to work as someone who has dabbled recently, also maybe into starting to work back for another company again. It's not that nobody wants to work. There's lots of people and it's not just me. I've heard this from multiple people that cannot find jobs that will call them back. Yes. And people don't want to go back. I remember I did recently have a phone interview and I remember by the end of that phone interview, my soul like (laughs) was sucked back in to that corporate world. And I was like, I don't want to do that. Like that is, I'm so far removed from that world that it, Mm -hmm. if it's not a forward thinking people first mentality organization that values me as a person and not just me as a number, Mm -hmm. I no, I, I can't, I can't do that anymore. And that is I, that is a majority of why us in the travel industry, because we are in the hospitality field are having such a big problem, especially this summer is because the hospitality industry is so ingrained in old school corporate values, unlike things like a tech company and the tech industry, which is so people forward right now. Like I remember there was one of our cruise suppliers, I think it was, was saying, and we're going to get people to start coming back to work into the call center. And I'm like, mm, why, but are you, 
And I, I understand too. It is annoying when I'm hearing things going on in the background and hearing dogs barking or like children running around (laughs) and all that. But then that's also, you have to put a standard for your company and like, keep up with it. I don't know if that's like cold or shadowing like calls to make sure that the people that you're employing are actually doing what you've told them, but it's just, it is an endless site. And clearly I'm on a tire rate about this <laughs> because I was in it. I, I was mm-hmm. in it and they are such low paying jobs mm-hmm. that don't afford people basic things that they need in their life. They have to have four jobs working in the hospitality industry in order to have the one income that people were able to have 50, 60 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's so much that could be, um, I I know I've told this story on one of my podcast episodes, but Zig Ziglar, he's an Mm -hmm. old school, like motivational speaker. And he told this story about how his wife would always it's probably made up, but she would cut off the end of the ham whenever she was making a ham. And he's like, mm-hmm. why do you do that? Well, Cause my mom did it. Well, so they call her mom. Why do you do that? Oh, cause my mom did it. Just call her mom. And she's like, oh, because it wouldn't fit in my pan. And so there are so many things. Yeah. yeah. There are so many things that in this industry that we do, um, just because that's the way it's always been done. But right. If you ask yourself, and this applies to every travel agent listening right now, you can do this. Just ask yourself why, right? Why do I do it this way? Literally like write down everything you do day to day and ask yourself why, and could you do it differently? And if you did it differently, how would you do it? There's a, um, I'll give you the link and you can put it in the show notes. There's a podcast. It's very long. It's Tim Ferriss. It's probably two or three hours long, Mm -hmm. um, with, one of the owners of a restaurant in Chicago named Alinea or something like that. Um, but they, I loved this story. Not every, I just geek out about this stuff. So maybe not everybody will find it interesting, but <laughs> they were opening a restaurant and they literally did that. They went through every single thing. Why are there white tablecloths on, on every table in every fancy restaurant? Mm-hmm. Well, because the tables underneath are really ugly. So we have to cover mm-hmm. them up. Okay. So could we do nice tables? Sure. But then there's some law in Chicago where the silverware can't touch the table. So they had to make pillows for the silverware. And it's just mm-hmm. so fascinating how they, all these things that every other restaurant did mm-hmm. and they just thought, okay, why, why do they do this? Why do they do that? How can we do it different? Um, and I like, that's what I really want this industry to do is right. And travel agents, we cannot sit around and wait for the suppliers to do this for us. Right. Um, they're not going, they're going to take whatever we're willing to give. Right. And if that is our heart and soul and our blood, sweat and tears and the rest of our life, they will take it and they will pay us $50 for 40 hours of work right. and act like they're doing us a favor and they're not. And yeah, it's just, it's beyond time to change it um, right. and not accept right. that anymore and decide what you want and figure out how to make it happen. Because literally right now, anything is possible. You can do anything you want. And I feel like people hear me talk sometimes, and this is why I hold back on some stuff because I feel like people hear me and they're like, whatever, like that is not (laughs) realistic. You are just selling people stuff that isn't actually going to ever be able to work, but it there, everything Marie Forleo, everything is figure outable, Mm -hmm. literally everything. Mm -hmm. There is a way to do exactly what you want in exactly the way you want. Um, And that's like to bring it back to the ADHD stuff. Like I can't, there are some things I'm good at showing up on time for the most part. I don't have Mm -hmm. that problem, but I was in a group and a lady like totally spaced on a client call, like wasn't just late, just totally forgot about it. And she was just devastated. And you would think, well, that you can't run a business that way, but guess Mm -hmm. what? Everybody else was chiming in saying, oh my gosh, I've done that so many times. Right. Um, so if you think I'm not saying don't show up to client meetings, but like, it doesn't have to be the, the way we've always thought it had to be. You can make it up. I, I love that you say that. I do want to put a disclaimer on what I was saying. Yes, there are still bad employee eggs. So I'm not saying that the hospitality (laughs) industry is totally to blame for it, but there's things that have to be broken in that system. But I love how you said that we have to do things differently, but also that are going to work with us. There was a travel advisor who recently mentioned to me, she's like, 
I've been having success closing deals on zoom calls. Like I've been transferring, I've been stopping doing phone calls and now I have zoom calls because it feels like more personal because I can see you. And that's like, I, I just recently had my own revelation that I really like to have conversations like the one-on-one -on -one conversations or small group conversations. So I might not want to use an attract strategy that is like big public speaking, but I want to have a coffee chat with you, or I mm -hmm. want to do this podcast or be on somebody else's podcast. And that's my strategy. I I get a little, I go to networking events, but I get a little bit nervous networking, whereas somebody who might be a little bit more extroverted and has more of an energy battery than what I do, they are going to love going out and meeting people. So what is going to work with you and your capabilities and what you're able to handle now with what you've been given? Yep. Yep. That's exactly it. There, there are so many tools and resources now that there's literally no excuse for doing things in a way that doesn't feel good to you. Mm -hmm. You don't have to borrow somebody else's strategies and, and to take it back to experimenting too. just try something. You don't know if you're going to like it unless you try it. Um, if that zoom, somebody listening and they're like, Ooh, zoom, zoom consultations or zoom calls. Right. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. um, try it. And maybe you'll like it. Maybe you mm -hmm. won't, but you won't know unless you try Right. Yeah. There's just so, so many options and possibilities now. Right. And uh, there's another one that was like, she didn't want to do FITs anymore. She just wanted to do group groups where she was the group leader. And she mm -hmm. just wanted to invite people to come on her groups because she just wanted to manage four trips throughout the year, as opposed to 24 trips yes. throughout the year. Yeah. yeah. And for other people, that sounds like torture. Right. So <laughs> Having yeah. to lead a group. Ah! Yes. Yeah. I mean, so, I would love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just love, I, I used to wish I lived in the past. Like I was obsessed <laughs> with history, and, but now like I would never, I would, I'm so thankful to be born when I was and like the internet and phones and zoom <laughs> like right. podcasts. Um, it just, the possibilities are literally endless. Uh, and so there's no, it's a shame that so many people are just stuck doing things the old way. Right. Right. And they're going to quickly find out that their business is also going to get yes. stuck and they're not going to be able to move forward unless they're adapting mm -hmm. to their strengths is one thing, but also adapting to the changing world and the changing consumer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really interested to see what things look like in a year. Cause I think we're still just, it's chaos right now, but mm -hmm. <laughs> what right. people's expectations, like what, what they're going to want and what their expectations are. Mm -hmm. um, I really think if we play our cards right and do like get the word out about what travel agents do, I think this comeback they're talking about is definitely going to happen. I think people want those experiences now, like they don't want to just go check off. Right. I saw these three sites and now on to the next city. Um, and I know people have said that for a long time, but I still think it, it was common or, um, there was still a lot of that happening. And I think now people just really want a personalized mm -hmm. experience, not just to be a tourist. And I think people are also valuing their own time even mm, more. Yes that they don't want to do it themselves mm -hmm. anymore. Not everybody. Some people still get the rush of, of DIY which is fine. Uh, but they're obviously not the clients for us, but yeah, I, I see a lot more people. I, I, and even like in my own business, there's people that I've known for years who have never worked with me that are now like, Hey, I'm interested in this. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, oh yes. I will help you. <laughs> Let's do this. Yeah. I think there might, e there could even be opportunities for, and with those DIY people. Cause, um, I'm somebody who I generally like to do things myself. Like I like to learn it. I like to research, mm -hmm. but I don't want to do the actual work of it. Um, so yeah. I think like there are hybrid opportunities there. I know somebody who does, um, Dubsado setups for people mm -hmm. and she now does 
Um, she's done courses, she's done, done for you. And now she does done with you. And she schedules, I don't know, six to eight hours, a, whatever it is, it might even be just four. And she will sit with you screen share and you literally go through your whole workflow and she sets it all up while you're there. So you're discussing your business needs. Um, and like your, cause every business is different. So you're discussing what your right. business needs and you, what your ideal workflow is. And she's sharing suggestions too, and setting it up with you. Um, she also said, she's not going to, she talked to, we talked a little bit on Instagram about this. Cause she asked a question about something about consultation calls. And I was like, to be honest, um, I don't hire people. Like I don't need a consultation call. When I hire somebody, I already know I've followed them on Instagram. I've listened to them on podcasts. Right. I've checked out their website. I whatever I know, I trust them. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm not going to, I don't need a consultation call. I might have a couple of questions about like logistics and mm -hmm. like just confirming that what you do is what I'm understanding that you do. Um, so I started thinking like, would that be possible for travel agents to not do, um, a consultation call at all. You, you still need to, I haven't quite figured out how to get rid of it completely because you do still want to make sure that their expectations and their budget match right, right. reality and stuff like that. But it's just things like that, that you could, you know, we initially would say, oh, we wouldn't work with a DIY person, but maybe you do. Maybe you're like, you give them a little bit of feedback and you handle the logistics and the bookings. That's still worth hundreds of dollars in fees. <laughs> well, like and I, I love that idea too, because that re reminds me of, I worked with Amy Graves, who is an SEO expert, like Google analytics expert in making sure that my Google business profile was set up. So I had 45 minutes of her time and I did the screen share over zoom and she's like, okay, let's do this. Let's do this. So I'm wondering and if like getting into the fee conversation, if we're going to the plumber charges an hour for his time, mm -hmm. so then a travel advisor, just to do a consult or do one of these like done with you things, you're charging an a hundred dollars for an hour of your time. If that's where your normal fees start at, and you're going to be doing a heck of a lot than D D W Y, then you need to increase yeah. your rates. Yeah. Cause that I'm also thinking about, uh, I recently sailed on celebrity for the first time and I had someone come out to me and they're like, Oh my gosh, my, my kids bought me a cruise on celebrity. And I would love to pick your brain on everything. And I was like, I need to create a consult for that too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you just, that like for that conversation, it's like, sure, here's, here's my card with my Calendly link, mm -hmm. book a spot and make them pay for it. And Use the pick my brain consult session. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I would call it that too. Yes. <laughs> Not ready yeah. to work with a travel advisor. Why don't you pick my brain instead? Oh, oh I, this is a business opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me know how that works out. What you decide to do. I think yeah. I there's just so that. many different ways. It just takes conversations to right because I have been doing a lot of do enough people know that your business even exists if you're not meeting your yearly income goals then probably not you need more clients which means you need more prospects and you can't get those unless you're meeting them where they are if you're doing things like sending weekly emails and posting to social media you have put the horse ahead of the cart so let's put the horse back where it belongs and find opportunities to increase the number of eyeballs on your business by joining the Visibility Collaborative. Search for visibility opportunities, track your efforts, and troubleshoot in community. Head on over to the show notes to learn more and get ready to turn your new prospects into profits. I have, so I've this is going to be a lot of information, but let's just put it out there. I've been dipping my toes back into the dating world again. Ooh. And so I follow a lot of people on Instagram who are like dating coaches uh, or however you want to use that term. And I've been loving the reels that they do where it's kind of like giving advice or giving a scenario. And it's just them talking for 30, 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. And so I've been making reels for my travel business that are very similar to that kind of like, 
Did you know that there's more to cruising than just belly flop competitions? Like you can actually have a peaceful pool day on your sea day instead of being inundated yeah. with dance parties and everything. Yeah. And like creating a call to action to that. So I'm even thinking I could market something like a pick my brain. Hey, you don't, do you want to DIY your next trip, but you need a little bit of assistance from a professional register for my pick your brain session. Mm -hmm. I want to test that out. Just helping them. I mean, one, like one aspect of that could be like, so you think you want to go on this cruise line or stay at this hotel because your friend said it's the best one. Right. I'll help you make sure that that really is the right fit for you. Cause I can't tell you how many times people like my friend said right. this cruise line. And you're like, mm, based on what I know about you, <laughs> you're not going to enjoy that experience. Um, right. So just making sure that what they're looking at is going to be a good fit. Yeah. Like, is this cruise line? Huh, because that even makes me think about like the top cruise lines that I sell and uh, being able to speak to someone is a way quicker transformation than Googling the information yourself. Yes. So like, do you want to do an X, Y, Z is, is X, Y, Z cruise line, the right cruise line for you book a consult mm-hmm. with me and we can talk through it. Yeah. And even if you're Googling, like you don't know what that person's personality is, who's saying, right. like I've fallen into this trap so many times with tools that I've purchased, like online tool, business tools and stuff. Like somebody's like, Oh, this one's the best one. Um, and so I buy it and I'm like, I don't even do like, I don't do business the way you do. And this mm-hmm. tool is not <laughs> a good fit for me. I don't know why. Um, like I'm, I'm trying really hard to ask better questions. Like mm-hmm. will that work for the way I want to work? And so it's similar with like cruise lines and stuff they're Googling and getting the like best cruise for families. But if they don't like a lot of people and big crowds and they like spending time with their kids. They're not going to use the kids club. Maybe on cruise is the best family right. cruise for them, not Royal Caribbean or Disney. Like, so yeah. Um, yeah. And that goes back to the whole education thing too. I think travel agents historically have felt like we had to hold everything, all our expertise. We can't right. tell people what we know because then they're just going to go book it on their own. Well, guess what? They can find all that online if they really want they're to gonna anyway. Do it anyways. Um, and by educating them and doing those reels, like you are, it's a showing them things that maybe they didn't think to Google. Maybe right. they haven't gone online to search it out. So it's educating people in that way, but also showing that, you know, what you're talking about and, I use this example a lot when I'm explaining this is, um, I don't think, I think one of them passed away. Um, click and clack. They were, what's the show was on NPR, the car talk. It was car talk on NPR and it was brothers, I think. And they owned a auto shop and people would call in and say, my car is doing this. It was usually a Subaru, somebody with a Subaru. It's like (laughs) 12 years old and it's making this knocking noise. And they were like, magic. They would know exactly what the problem was Mm -hmm. and tell you how to fix it. Now they are just two guys with very limited time with a shop in one area of the country, like Boston or something. So no, most people listening to them did not work with them, but guess what? If I lived near them, Mm -hmm. I would, and they had availability. I would just take my car to them. Even if they're going to tell me exactly what it is. And even if I could look on YouTube and find a video showing me how to fix it, I'm not going to, Mm -hmm. um, and them sharing all their knowledge just makes me trust them more. So the more you share, the more you share for, with people in these reels that you're doing, the more they're going to trust you and want to work with you. Right. Um, Even if you gave all the answers away, we all think we're special. So like, they still will want to be like, okay, now I need to talk to her about my situation because Uh she gave all this great advice. I know she knows what she's talking about, but, but I'm special and I'm different. So I want her (laughs) to tell me what's right for me. Right. Um, So, yeah, I think that's like, that's such a great strategy for earning no like, and trust with people and getting them to want to work with you. Exactly. Just keep giving it away. And even like, I know some people are like, well, what if another travel pro like starts taking it's already out yeah. there. It was funny. Um, one of my friends had said he's, he's a creative and he's like, isn't all art kind of like a replication in some form or fashion of somebody else's it's been mm-hmm. inspired by somebody else. And yeah. that's like, I feel 
there's so many of us that are saying the same things, but we're saying it differently, possibly, or we're saying it with a different lens, a different viewpoint, or maybe you really love my voice, but you hate the other person's voice or the yeah. other person's attitude. So you would never want to listen to their podcast anyways, or you've listened to me and you're like, ah, you are not my cup of tea, Rita. Like we're not, we're not going to connect anymore. Yeah. yeah. And that goes back to just being yourself too, and trusting yourself and trusting your own voice. And, mm -hmm. um, it's been like, I, as somebody with eight, like undiagnosed ADHD have always, and also as a very young mom. So I was 17 and 18, 19, whatever, when my kids were growing up and all my peers, like their parents, friends were old, like 10 to 20 years older than me at the time. So I've just always had these insecurities and this idea that I need to act professional and like, I have it all together and, and yet I'm ADHD. So my brain is just chaos. And for most of my life, I've tried to rein that in. And now mm -hmm. I'm like, I just, I can't, um, it was the bucket list family. Somebody asked them one time, why do you film literally first thing in the morning, like their hair, their bed head and sleep in their eyes still. And he's like, we decided from the beginning, if we tried to do it perfectly, mm -hmm. we would never do it because there would be days when we couldn't, it would take too long to like do our hair and make it whatever. Right. Um, so I've really tried to take that on too and just be myself. And mm -hmm. so some people are going to love or not mind that I ramble and that I'm not super Same. professional and, um, that I lose my train of thought and can't find the right words. And then there are other people who are going to want the person who is very like corporate and what we would think of as professional and always, right. and, and that could very well be their personality. Like they, that's them. And some people are going to like that. And some people are going to like me. And that's right. the same with travel travelers. Like some right. are going to want, everybody's different. And there are more people out there. There's not a traveler shortage. Um, there is travelers who know the value of travel agents shortage, mm -hmm. but there are every travel agent could have a thousand clients a year and we still wouldn't be able to serve everyone. So right. yeah. when everybody has a learning opportunity, even like the most professional people, I feel like that the more time goes by, the more people that I meet, I'm like, we're all just trying to figure out even life in general. Yes. So you may think that someone has it all together. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I am a very imperfect being, but I'm like, didn't they should know what X is Yeah. and vice versa. They're like, Rita should know what Y is. <laughs> we're all missing something, but mm -hmm. that's what we're all here to help each other with also is to figure it out. And then yeah. I feel like the other thing is like the comparison game. I used to compare myself to people like, Oh, why am I not there? Well, yep. those other advisors inherited businesses from family members. Mm -hmm. So they're 10, 20 plus years ahead of me. Yep. Or they went to college somewhere and all their college friends work at Facebook. And mm -hmm. so they grew their business. Yeah. You'd never know yes. where, um, or someone was successful in the finance industry and said, screw yes. finance. I'm going into travel now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But nobody wants to talk about, they don't talk about that generally. Like you'll see the article about them in the trade magazine, mm -hmm. but it doesn't talk about the advantages that they had when they started that you did. Right. And that doesn't mean that you can't like, I literally, like, I didn't know anybody, my aunt and uncle, my uncle had worked in Saudi Arabia, so they had traveled internationally, but, um, most of my family barely even left Michigan when right. I, like, I had never been anywhere. I think we drove across the border in, in Mexico once just like drove across and came back right. so we could say we were there, but like, so it, I'm not saying it's not possible without those, but don't compare yourself to right. people. Cause you don't know what advantages they had. Right. Right. Yeah. And especially like for someone like myself who I'm not married, I don't have kids. I can't relate really to people on, on those different facets. I also come from the hospitality industry, which is a very low income industry. So it has been a struggle, but I can either choose to live in that. Oh, woe is me or be like, Rita, you got to snap out of that. Like, yeah, those are the circumstances that you have. But again, you have the power. And I also say this uh, in a pretty good mental capacity right now, because I know if I wasn't in there, I would not have the capacity to be like, okay, snap out of it. And that's, yeah. 
I don't want people to think like it's so easy as just snapping out of it because I have been like the past couple of months have been difficult for me trying to figure out life. (laughs) So many different facets of life. But I also know that the circumstances that I have don't define me. Like I can still change things if Mm -hmm. I want them to change. Yep. And a lot of those things can be like, this is very Pollyanna of me, but they can be benefits as well. Like Mm -hmm. you mentioned, like not having children. I was in a group and somebody was like, where are all the people here without kids? And (laughs) they're like me, me. And all the moms were like, you're just bragging because you have extra time in your day. (laughs) Or I saw a thing on, um, on Instagram where somebody's like, this is me crying about all the children I don't have. And she's like crying and wiping her tears with like Louis Vuitton bags and and a coach bag. And I was like, Oh my gosh, that was hilarious. Hundred dollar bills. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. That, yeah. I had so a friend, I changed my profile picture. She's like, can you please stop like looking so beautiful and well rested while you're on vacation as I'm here juggling three kids and stressed yes. out? Yeah. Everybody has a different story yes. and it's, it starts in a different place. Yeah. How, how can you utilize that to your advantage? Yep. Or just work with it instead of against it. And like back to the ADHD thing, like I could continue to beat myself up for not being able to do the things other people do. Like Mm -hmm. I can't work the same hours. Um, I can't like everything takes me longer. Mm -hmm. Um, and I could just be mad about that. Or I can think like, how can I make this work for me? Or how can I how can I accommodate this? So I have lots of like my, all my alarms on my phone and, you know, I just Mm -hmm. try to make use tools to allow myself to work with it. I even think that that's that here's the marketing side of me. I feel like that could be a marketing opportunity and either offering ADHD friendly trips or working Mm -hmm. with, do you also suffer or however you want to, whatever verb you want to use with ADHD. Well, that's, I specialize in working with people with ADHD and I make the process so much easier because I can understand Mm. how your brain works. Yep. Like no penalty. If you don't show up to an appointment or um, (laughs) an itinerary that's mapped out so that you can't forget where you're supposed to be when, um, yeah. Or I'll send you email reminders or what, whatever yes. it is. Mm-hmm. How can you work? Now I'm kind of like, that is actually your superpower. Cause yeah. that I, and I don't shy away. I think a lot of that stuff we've shied away from telling people what I think might be stereotypical hindrances, mm-hmm. but I'm, I am very open to tell people, yes, I have an autoimmune disease. And I feel like it normalizes because I remember I was diagnosed in 2007, but didn't have, wasn't like heavily symptomatic. Like I was in 2020 and it is a very lonely feeling. But once you start openly communicating that there's more people that are like, huh, I have that Mm -hmm. too. And you're able to be like, okay, I'm not crazy when this happens because this person has also dealt with it. Yeah, you can look at it from that. And that's why I don't specialize in family travel. I don't know. Like I, I am very aware that traveling as a parent and especially like as a single parent is very difficult, but I wouldn't know how to help you navigate that because I don't have that experience Mm -hmm. in my tool belt. Yeah. 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 I think a lot of people like here, Oh, family travel is going to be really hot. So they jump into it. And I'm like, if you don't really love that, it's not going to work for you. Right. But yes. And about normalizing things, when you share your story, it makes it easier for somebody else to share their story too. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, like I mentioned before, I I've struggled with depression most of my life and it's a hard, especially 10, 20 years ago, it was very hard to talk. Like nobody talked about it. Mm-hmm. I remember one of my first therapists told me I should get Prozac and I about I literally started bawling because it felt to me at the time that was like the crazy pill. Mm. Um, and so I decided then like, I'm not, I'm just going to tell people, um, I'm not going to be embarrassed. And I'm so glad now that people talk about things like that so openly. Um, but yeah, that has nothing to do with travel, but (laughs) yeah, no, but I mean, I feel like it connects, it connects us all, like all the different intersections that we have. 
which is a whole that diversity within travel industry is a whole other episode too yes but um I feel like it's time for us to wrap this up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've been going on for quite a bit. Uh, uh, how can people stay in touch with you if they did vibe with you and they're like, oh, Christy oh is God. someone I should keep an, keep an eye on? Um, I would say the primary thing would be to subscribe to the podcast, which is mm-hmm. Travel Geniuses podcast. Um, I'm terrible. I really, I've realized the importance of being more just literally posting anything on Instagram and sending newsletters. Um, it's something I've struck. I don't, I think part of it is I feel like it's really, I don't know. I just have been terrible at it, but there was somebody I wanted to learn more about recently. I went to her Instagram and there was literally nothing there. I'm like, Oh, this is what I do. Like there's (laughs) (laughs) literally me. Um, so the best way right now would be to listen to and subscribe to the podcast. Okay. Um, and then I am on Instagram at travel geniuses. Um, and I am going to make an effort to post more there. Okay. Perfect. I, I was kind of like a sidebar to that too. I'm I, the two service providers that I always recommend to people are my pest management. Like I I was dealing with squirrels in my attic before and then a lawyer, an accident lawyer, and I don't follow them on social media. (laughs) So I was (laughs) like, even though I do love using social media as a tool, just you bringing that in, I'm like, you don't have to be successful in business and be on social media. There's other ways to reach people. So I just... I yeah. had to like drop that in before, before we yes. wrapped up. <laughs> and if anybody has any, obviously like, well, DM me on social media. I'm pretty good at DMS. Yeah. Um, you can also email me Christy at travel It will probably take me a little while to get back to you, but I'll do my best. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I'm open to any questions. If anybody has any questions based on what we talked about today too. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, and this was a lot me. of fun. fun. And covering like Again. so many. Yes, we will. Yes, I know. <laughs> I, I feel say, like this was a very ADHD conversation. Like, we yes, just were all yes. Over. <laughs> I, I agree with that. I have like my little list of uh, points that I was like, oh, these are all these are all the stigmas. And I knew we weren't going to get to them all. So coming to yeah. you sometime in the future, more Christy <laughs> and Rita. <action>. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, travel pros, you have a wonderful week and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me on the Strategic Travel Entrepreneur. Please subscribe and leave the show a rating on your favorite podcast platform. Oh, and don't forget to take a look at the show notes for important information and links. See you next week.